Every year thousands of families lose their beloved ones, some to death and some to the unknown. Some of those cases might take weeks, months or years to be solved, and others may take a lifetime and still reach no end, leaving behind just blurry things that have no points or leads to understand what happened. In today's video, we will cover one of the mysteries that happened 4 years ago, the disappearance case of Cynthia Anderson, under some bizarre and unexpected circumstances. Before we start, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. In 1980, a 20-year-old named Cynthia Anderson, known as Cindy among her close ones, began having nightmares about being abducted and murdered. She talked to her mother about the issue, but she somehow neglected Cindy's problem and thought that it was not something serious and she would manage to get through it. The frightening night experiences continued to follow Cindy for a year. She tried to escape them during the daytime, but it wasn't easy for her at all. She worked as a secretary at a law firm in Toledo, Ohio, and her tragedy began after a couple of months after the nightmare started, when a message showed up outside of her work. The message remained for over six months until it was again painted outside as graffiti, only to reappear a few weeks later. After several days exactly on the 4th of August 1981, Cindy was the first to arrive at work. As usual, she would walk in the morning alone in the office until co-workers came around lunchtime. She was used to keeping the office doors locked and working alone. As usual, her co-workers arrived at noon and immediately thought something was wrong. When they couldn't find Cindy, they noticed that her book was left open at Cindy's desk to a violent part, which was the only violence depicted on the whole book. While they were trying to find out where she was, they came across the phone records that would show that Cindy had answered calls up until 10 am. Besides the co-workers having to unlock the doors to get in, the alarm that alerted the business next door was never turned on, which is speculated that the abductor could have locked up after he took Cindy and the only items missing from the office were Cindy's purse and keys while her car was still locked and parked in the lot outside. The only thing that is known is that Cindy had arrived, turned on the lights, a radio, and the air conditioner. There were no signs of forced injury or a struggle, therefore the police department had to wonder if Cindy had to let her attacker in by her own will and maybe agree to go with him. The investigation was taking part in the deep life of Cindy, and the police were trying to find any trace that can lead them to something to follow. They started to ask her family about her emotional and family life, and yet everything they found was totally normal, as nothing indicated her will to disappear. Cindy's family were shocked, but knew that she would never just run away, as she had already given her two-week notice at the legal office because she was starting a Bible college degree with her boyfriend. Furthermore, Cindy left a substantial amount of money in her checking account, and her social security number has never been used. Besides the almost threatening message scrolled outside the building, Cindy had been receiving bizarre calls over a period of time before her disappearance. Larry Mullins, who was a law firm client, had been in the office the day before Cindy disappeared. He told the police that while he was there, Cindy had received two calls from someone that appeared to scare her. Mr. Mullins stated that he had asked if something was wrong, and Cindy told him that she had been receiving these calls but did not reveal the identity of who was calling. With police having no expected suspectations and reaching dead ends, they tried to investigate another group of suspects who rose to the top of the list. As shortly after Cindy disappeared, nine drug-related offenders were arrested on drug trafficking charges, in particular one of the group members called Jose Rodriguez Jr., who was a former client of the law firm was the main suspect and again the police could not link him to Cindy's case. With the hope of finding anything related to kidnapping and sex offending suspects, the police targeted the serial killer brothers Anthony and Nathaniel Cook, who were killing in the Ohio area and were convicted of killing nine people in the 80s. The brothers were questioned and pressured by authorities, 
but no link could ever be placed between them and Cindy. The desperation to find Cindy was circling the case after many attempts to find her were ending up without results. However, the authorities were doing whatever they could to spot a little something that may lead them to a bigger thing. As Toledo Police Chief Mike Navarre said, every so often new information comes in and we follow up on it. In September 1981, an anonymous caller phoned the police to say that Cindy was alive and held against her will. The officer who spoke to the caller said that she appeared nervous and refused to give her name. The caller informed the police that Cindy was being held in the basement of a house. She also said that the house was white and sat next to another home owned by the same family of the abductor. The caller said the family was out of town and that their son was the one holding Cindy captive. And just before the officer was about to ask her about the needed info, she ended the call. In 2008, Michael Anderson died without knowing what happened to his daughter leaving a period of 28 years without so much as a solid clue to where she might be. And for all this time, he believed that someday she would call and say she had amnesia but she is still alive. The case went cold as neither her body was found nor information that may stipulate she is still alive. Eventually, charges were never filled and the mystery of Cindy Anderson has remained among the most mysterious and unsolved cases of disappearances until today. So do you think that Cindy is still alive, is she held captive somewhere, or she had some kind of dementia that ruined her memory and drove her to live unconsciously? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos of crime and mysteries and much more interesting stories. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.